Yo, what's up, y'all? It's MMA Analyst here to do my preview for Strike Force Diaz vs. Noons 2. It's a rematch. Um, let's get right down to it. But as I say that, I think to myself, let me just preface this with y'all might see somebody who, you know, I don't know if I call myself it, but, you know, hey, y'all might see the MMA Analyst go 0 and 4, or at least 1 and 3. Absolutely. Based on these tough ass fights, very compelling fights, um, I might go one and three. Having ten fights on a UFC card that helps. You get three wrong, you can still get you know seven right. But man, four four fights. That's all you got to choose from, and they're all, or at least three or four of them, are very close, very competitive fights. That's a bus passing by, y'all. Let's get right down to it. Nick Diaz versus KJ Nunes, Carl James, aka. Um, KJ Nunes is Nick Diaz's last loss. Since then, Diaz has gone on a tear, seven fight win streak. Um, really impressive wins over Scott Smith, Marius Zaromskis, Harold Sakurai, Frank Shamrock, and then just. I mean, some of those were also beatdowns, but just absolute beatdown also over Thomas Denny, um, Lucian Corbury. Um, just really nasty. Nasty fights. He's going out there. He's keeping the fight on the feet. He's boxing people's faces up. He's keeping it entertaining. He, he's trash talking. He's doing everything the Diaz brothers do, and, and he's the best of the two. So, y'all should have knew. Anyways. Crazy. One of my favorite guys to watch, no homo, in MMA. And absolutely top five of my favorite fighters. Top five in in, in combat sports when it comes to uh, personality. Just outrageous. Um, this is his biggest test right now. I'm not saying this is his biggest test of all the people he could fight. I'm saying that of the guys available for him... To fight, I do believe this is his biggest test. I think if he were to fight, fight Mayhem Miller, which it's the kind of fight I did kind of want to see more than this, but I just have him beating Mayhem, you know, being fine on the ground. You know, it's not like Mayhem's a super wrestler, you know, definitely smashing him on the feet. So I just have Diaz easily winning that fight. Um, but against KJ Noons, the situation is, you know, Diaz... Loses one way. He goes out there against solid wrestlers who take him down and stay on top and are good enough to not get submitted. Or just people with good ground games. You know, uh, Kenny Florian. I'm uh, sorry. Um, Cairo Parisian, I meant. Diego Sanchez. Um, Sean Shirk. You know, solid guys. They get on top. They can scramble. They're not going to get submitted. And they win by getting more points and winning rounds. Except with, other than Jeremy Jackson, KJ Noons, who is, who I believe, the best boxer in MMA. Um, don't talk about James Tony. You know, he didn't even fight in MMA, if you really think about it. He went out there, got taken down, and didn't even tap. Didn't get choked out, didn't tap, just waved it off. So, he didn't even really box. He didn't even really fight. He, I think he's still 0-0 in MMA. Um, he did get beat down by Randy, though, in a UFC uh, event, but uh, in MMA, when it comes to actual boxing ability, people who actually have boxed or used boxing in an MMA fight, KJ Noons is the best one, and that's where I think this fight is really, you know, the thing that's messing me up. Um, Nick Diaz, I don't think he's going to be able to get this fight to the ground. KJ Noons is really good at stuffing takedowns. Um, how good really is he? I don't know. You know, against jujitsu minded guys like Diaz and other people he's fought in the past, he's been able to stuff takedowns. Could he stuff, uh, you know, a nasty takedown from, you know, one of these super wrestler powerhouses from, you know, the UFC or whatnot? Hmm. But in this fight, this fight's going to stay on the feet. And on the feet, KJ Noons delivers the more powerful shots, the faster shots, um, very accurate. His head isn't just sitting there like Scott Smith and Frank Shamrock and Thomas Denny, guys who, 
You know, maybe they're too proud to go to the ground. Um, so they'll just stand up and get boxed. Uh, you know, Scott Smith, not the best idea to try and go to the ground with Diaz. So these guys just got their head sitting there like a punching bag. No head movement. Horrible f- footwork. And just getting smashed. That's not going to happen with KJ Nunes. Obviously, this sounds like I'm making a case for Nick Diaz losing this fight. And if this was a three-round fight, I would be 100% sure in my mind that one of my favorite fighters is going to lose on Saturday. But it's a five-round fight. And one thing we know about Nick Diaz is he can go 25 minutes. This guy has cardio for days. He's running marathons in between rounds. Um, So... That's where I think Diaz's ability to win this fight comes is in the later rounds. And it'll be a situation where he has to finish the fight. He can't lose the first three rounds, which I think is very likely, and then win the last two because that's not going to... The math doesn't add up, guys. He's going to have to finish KJ Noons in the last, sometime in the last two rounds. By the way, that will make up for one hell of a fight if this all happens. And you know what? That's what I'm picking. I'm picking KJ Noons to outbox and outwork, um, or at least um, be a little more. He actually chooses his shots and lands his shots. I think he drops Diaz at some point in the early stage of the fight, you know. But you know, more when he drops and he kind of sits back and you know sits on his on his butt and gets back up. You know what I mean? That's how Diaz falls. He doesn't get dropped and go all crazy. He's confident in his ground game. He's got a good chin, also. But anyways. I see him working through that, getting through the storm that is KJ Noon's boxing, and then KJ Noon's not having it in him for the last two rounds, and Diaz pulling off a fifth round finish. That's pretty specific. Y'all really can't expect me to be absolutely right with that, can you? I mean, if you want to be safe, then just go with the underdog, KJ Noon's, to win the fight. But if you want to go out there crazy with some ridiculous pick, that's my pick. I'm pulling for uh, Nick Diaz. It's going to be a good fight. Marlos Conan versus Sarah Kaufman. Um, Sarah Kaufman, pretty much, probably the best at her weight class in the world. Um, when When it comes to female fighters that are at the top, you've got... Um, Megumi, who's like 22-0 and 0 with all submissions or maybe one TKO, I think, recently. She's probably pound for pound the best. Definitely my favorite of all the females to watch other than Misha Tate for completely different reasons. Then you have Sarah Kaufman, and then you have The Beast, uh, Cyborg. Um... Sarah Kaufman, 12 wins, no losses, coming off of a freaking power bomb over Roxanne Modafari, has wins over Shanna Baszler, also a win over my homegirl, Misha Tate. And uh, basically, you know, nine knockouts out of her 12 wins. Very solid on the ground. If she does get taken to the ground or if the fight does find its way to the ground, she'll probably end up on top and, and not getting submitted. Um, if she ends up on the bottom, I see her being able to get back up. Sarah Kaufman, very solid fighter. Um, I'm sorry, um, Marlos Conan, very solid fighter in her own ranks. Um, coming off of a loss to uh, Cyborg, where she took a manly beating. She took a beating for like three rounds. It was nasty. Um, she took like... It was bad, uh, but she made it through two rounds, made it through some of the third, kept coming back, and that shows crazy heart. Um, before that fight, and she was fighting out of a weight class. She was going up to fight, you know, uh, a, just an animal. She's coming off of a win prior to that over Roxanne Matafari, somebody she had actually lost to back in 2000, uh, back in 2007. Um, I lost to Aaron Tohill, and... Uh, She's just solid, but her thing is she's going to want to try and get this fight to the ground. 12 submissions out of her 17 wins. And uh, on the feet, she'll be outclassed. On the ground, I don't see her submitting. Kaufman, really, this is my one surefire bet pick. Um, 
you know, if hell, if Kaufman doesn't win this, I might go on for it. But I'm picking Kaufman. Josh Thompson versus Jay Z Cavalcanti. This is a tough one. You've got uh, Josh Thompson, solid fighter. He's had his injuries and whatnot. Changed with AKA. Um, you know, good wrestling. Let's see, he's got, you know, his last wins over Pat Healy. He's got a loss to Gilbert Melendez, but he also has a win over Gilbert Melendez. A win over Nam Fan. Yeah, you know, the dude from Ultimate Fighter 12. He fought before that. Um, a nice win over Dwayne Bang Ludwig back in 2006. He has a loss to Clay Guida. That was in his Strike Force debut. Um, it was also for the Lightweight Championship. And uh, he has a loss in his last UFC fight. To Eves Edwards, it was a uh, flying, flying knee head kick. I think it was kind of, it was kind of nasty. I think if I remember, homeboy kind of like spun around and did this ridiculous kick or whatnot. Anyways, it was brutal. Go watch the tape. But uh, what do I have happening here against Jay Z Calvacanti? Um, Jay Z Calvacanti, fifteen wins, three losses. One of those losses to Shinya Aoki. One of those losses to Tatsuya Kawajiri. And another loss to uh, Joachim Hansen. Um, solid, 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 solid fighter. Um, this fight really comes down to like who's going to own who on the ground, I believe. If Josh Thompson can go out there and pull off the whole American wrestler... You know, take you down, hold you down, control you, aka style fight. Um, that's gonna be a tough time for Jay Z, a real tough time. Um, Jay Z has a powerful right hand or a powerful overhand. You know, this is a close one. My heart of hearts is saying that Josh Thompson's gonna win. In my head. Is saying Josh Thompson's gonna win. I want Jay Z Cavalcanti to win, but I gotta go with Josh Thompson. But this is a close fight. Anything can happen. Jay Z can catch him and knock him out. That can be it. Jay Z could end up on the top and not getting submitted. You know, win a round, tire him out. There's so many options and possibilities for this fight. Lots of fights. You know, they, anything can happen. They say that, but really, most likely, certain things are gonna happen. Um, in this fight, really anything can happen, but I'm going to pick uh, Josh Thompson. And then in the fight I'm looking forward to also, we've got Tyrone Woodley upcoming. You know, we'll see how good he is over time, but definitely somebody to look out for and watch uh, against Andre Galvao, who is going to be um, Tyrone Woodley's toughest opponent yet. Tyrone Woodley coming over, uh, coming off of a win. Um, a split decision win, which he probably should have lost over Nathan Coy. And then prior to that, he is 5-0 and with five submissions. He's one of these super wrestlers, um, solid wrestling, and what is he like? I forget, but the point is, he's solid. And he gets to fight to the ground and against guys that aren't at his level of push and on his level of, of just grind, just wears people down and catches them in submissions. Um, will he be able to do that to uh, Andre Galvao? Well, not the submit part, but potentially the grind part and the ground part. Um, Andre Galvao, his biggest problem is he doesn't commit to his punches. He absolutely does not commit. He goes out there, heck, any of his strikes... He goes out and does little pitter-patter stuff. And most of the time, it's guys that don't want to go to the ground. I think Tyrone Whittley would be smart to not go to the ground. But if he did go to the ground, just play it smart as well. Um, could he potentially pull off the, you know, the super wrestler move? Take him down, control him, not get submitted? He could. But... Galvao is very good and very strong off of his back. He's very strong on the ground. He's definitely good with sweeps and whatnot. I don't know if he wants to play that game. Could Tyrone Woodley keep it on the feet? And, you know, because I know Galvao does not react well to getting hit. Um, 
he's my favorite, one of my favorite guys to watch in jiu-jitsu co- in competition, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. In MMA, he does not like getting hit at all. If Tyron Woodley keeps up the pace and causes Andre Galvao to shoot for sloppy takedowns, and Tyron Woodley being who he is, I think Tyron Woodley can actually tire out Andre Galvao, who will consistently want to get the fight to the ground. And then maybe, you know, he TKOs Andre Galvao. Maybe he actually goes for his own takedown at a point where Galvao is very tired. Um, I don't know, but I'm going with Tyron Woodley. I would love to see Andre Galvao win this fight. I would love to see it. I just don't see it happening. I'm going with Tyron Woodley. Um, with either a sub, with either a uh, third round TKO, or um, you know thirty twenty seven decision, man, good card. I'm loving the card. You know, three of the four fights are very compelling in my mind. Hell, the fourth one might be as well uh, to others, but to me, those three of the four fights, anybody can win. This is really a night where it's like if you bet on MMA, you better be ready to. Either lose your money, you got to be ready to lose because anything can happen with those fights. Um, who the man.com, we're going to talk about that later. I don't know if you guys noticed the little the emblem, the, the little splash thingy somewhere down at the bottom. Um, we'll talk about that later. Who the man.com, check out the website, it's a real cool idea, real good stuff going on there. And uh, we're going to start working, you know, side by side. You know what I mean? MMA, y'all, it's important.